Good morning, dear students. We will start the dynamic analysis. That is the second part, kinetic analysis. In the tomorrow's class, we have already seen uh, the kinematics parts analysis of single slider crank mechanism. Now, in the dynamic, the kinetic analysis, we will see. Okay, see in the uh, <coughs> in kinematic analysis. Let me go to the my board. Uh, which today's session we will cover the what is the piston effort, the normal thrust, uh, bearing thrust, and turning moment. These all uh, things we will cover in the today's class. Okay. Uh, and now we will start one by one. See uh, here the name is kinetic analysis. Kinetic analysis. of single slider crank mechanism <clears throat> the first thing oh, let me draw once more this piston and cylinder this is all the cylinder the piston inside the cylinder like this fitted here it is a connecting rod and it is here it is a crank okay and this, this is what the reciprocating line let me do that dotted reciprocating line right see we we already seen that these parts of the single collider mechanism while explaining the inversion this is the fixed which the cylinder is fixed and also the end of the crank this is also fixed means this is a link number one this uh, the crank performing this is a crank which is performing pure rotation the cylinder the piston is performing pure translation pure translation and the connecting rod is gender performing general plane motion general plane motion right this is how the single collider slider crank mechanism will works <laughs> okay so here the one assumptions we are taking while doing the kinetic analysis of the piston kinetic analysis means considering the forces kinematic means only you have to watch see for the velocity parameters here what are the assumptions we are making the assumption is like that assumption assumption is the mass of mass of connecting rod mass of connecting rod is neglected okay this is what the assumptions we are making see the actually the mass of the connecting rod is we are not neglecting we are adding one uh, dynamic uh, one masses here and here we are adding the masses that is at the end we can see the end we don't know the individual mass particles and motion general plane motion it is very difficult to analyze right for the simplification purpose what we are doing the, the some portion of the mass is added at this end i will call it as m1 mass and this is the m2 mass okay means the mass of this connecting rod is concentrated at this end and this end see the motion of this point if i consider the mass i know it is a pure translation and here also it's a pure rotation so for me it's a very simplified that's why this uh, uh, this is all called dynamic equivalent mass right and the correction couple also we need to uh, we we need to consider in the analysis kinetic analysis of this piston else this the see the error will not that much comes so if the error is negligible then we can assume in order to make the simplify we can make this assumptions okay and we also consider the correction factor also uh, correction coupling also we are considering in this assumptions okay now <coughs> see now we'll see the analysis of the piston 
you know the, i'll i'll take kinetic analysis how much force is exerting on this piston we will see let me go to the next slide yeah here uh, analysis of kinetic analysis of piston kinetic analysis means force analysis what we are doing right let me check where we are here here we are i'll i'll take this image in the next page in order to you to understood some parameters about this i will first i'll copy and paste here and i'll cut this from this page and i'll paste here okay yeah <coughs> see okay this will not move up and up or down as it i made copy and paste that's why we will work on this only see in the analysis of the piston uh, how the force on the piston is comes the kinetic analysis we are doing means first we check the force from the gases is coming from this side right this is force exerted by the gases f g or f gas if the gases are exerted on this piston piston tries to move in this direction right in in this reciprocating along the reciprocating line it will tries to move but the connecting rod that the some the force also it the connecting rod exerts or it compresses in this direction right and here it, it the compressive force comes in connecting rod the so i will get the force one in this direction which which this is responsible for angular rotation of this crank okay because of this force and the normal force is also like this and this force is a gas force this i will call it as en and this i will call it as cr f cr okay in the next slide i will draw the free body diagram of the piston fbd of piston see how the fbd of the piston looks like there are three concurrent forces right this is what the piston right the one force is along this the one is along this direction and other one is the normal acts at this direction the here the connecting rod that is f cr the force exerted on by the connecting rod f cr and this is f of gas and this is what the normal force okay which pass through this point and this is the piston this is what the free body diagram of the piston now once you draw the free body diagram of the piston yeah uh, first uh, let me some terms i have to explain you that uh, first i will explain that terms let me go to the previous slide in order to explain that see this side is called cover side cover side of the piston means from the cylinder to this side this is called cover side cover side and this is called crank side crank side okay you should keep this mind somebody ask you what is the cover side and what is the crank side then you should able that case you should able to answer this questions okay <sighs> now uh, see whatever the pressure exerted on this cover side i will ex see uh, uh, let 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 gas pressure gas pressure gas pressure at the cover end side at the cover end side is equal to p1 and gas pressure at the crank side gas pressure 
at the crank inside is equal to P2. Okay. Now uh, the area of the piston, the respective area of the piston at this side is A1, and for this the area is A2. Right? See how this area is, you can directly calculate this area from see this is what this side area but here the, the diameter of the connecting rod has to neglect in this right in while calculating the a2 a2 is 1 that is pi by 4 d square and here it is pi by 4 d square minus pi by 4 d naught square means the d naught square uh, let me correct this d naught d naught square right this is what the area occupied by this connecting rod you have to minus that right so that you will get the difference in the pressure okay now we will see do the analysis of the piston once you understood this the analysis of the piston these are the basic terminology you need to understand see the analysis of analysis of piston let me draw once more it will not take that much time right this is this is how piston looks like this is a connecting rod and this is what let me correctly draw this yes now it comes this is the reciprocating line of the piston <laughs> see if you have any doubts please put in a comment okay within a few days i will come online also so you need not worry but don't forget to subscribe my channel just now i have started so it, it has to grow in a very beautiful manner <laughs> right that's why i am telling you to subscribe the channel okay this is what the uh, this is pressure side here the pressure is p1 and here the pressure we are considered as a P2 right this is what the radius of the crank and this is length of connecting rod now you know if from that free body diagram what we if we do the equilibrium that is what the F we will get F of gas is equal to okay the one component <coughs> uh, let me go to the previous slides here the F of the gas is equal to the, see this angle you know this angle is beta right this is what the beta angle uh, one in order to oppose this f gas f gas that is crank rod apply force in this direction opposed to the motion of the piston okay if that not oppose sustain to oppose then, then ultimately crank has to revolve right the if there is a net force between this gas and crank then uh, this connecting rod then anyhow the crank has to rotate this is how the IC engine works. Okay, the one component that is F here cos beta will take in order to balance this. F gas, F gas is equal to. See here the F gas is equal to the whatever the difference in pressure. This that is P1, P1 A1 minus P2 A2. Right, this is what P2 A2. This is one equation from which I will got here directly. Right? This is what the gas exerted by the piston. Now from the free diagram, body diagram, what we will get, we will see. Uh, we know the acceleration of the piston. What is the acceleration? Acceleration. We have already derived this in the last class. <coughs> acceleration of piston. Acceleration of piston A is equal to R omega square in bracket cos theta plus cos 2 theta divided by n okay this is what the acceleration of the piston now the inertia force inertia force fi i will call it as fi is equal to inertia force is equal to mass into acceleration of the piston right the acceleration term i will add over here what I will get the inertia force Fi 
is equal to m r omega square in bracket cos of theta plus cos 2 theta divided by n this is what the inertia force of the connecting rod I will get okay and now we will see from the free body diagram what I will get okay once I balance in the free body diagram I will get see <coughs> here uh, n is the normal thrust right you know from that free body diagram n is normal thrust normal thrust force normal thrust force normal thrust force by cylinder cylinder wall on piston by cylinder wall on piston right and the F is F is equal to net force on the piston net force on piston ok this is what called the piston effort ok piston this is also called as piston net force on the piston that is the piston effort you understood this ok now the F the net force on the piston is equal to F of gas this which you have just now calculated uh, minus F I also we have calculated the inertia right <laughs> the net force on the piston is F gas F inertia and uh, there is also if there is a friction then friction comes also in picture that is FR minus plus or minus the mg that is the weight of the piston that will also we need to consider okay this is what the formula for in order to find the force on the force on the piston okay if you have any doubt please ask <laughs> see when we are drawing when we are drawing when we are drawing your BD that is a free body diagram that time the piston uh, the system attains the system attains dynamic equilibrium right then and then only it's a static or dynamic have to equilibrium then then only we can draw a free body diagram system attains dynamic equilibrium dynamic equilibrium means acceleration is zero right that is what the dynamic equilibrium okay from this what we will get the f yeah uh, the from uh, from the free body diagram what we are getting f is f cr right cos of beta this i can equate and other the n force the normal force i can equate it with the f cr the sign of beta right from the free body diagram we can we can easy calculate this okay once this done the FCR that is the force exerted on connecting rod is equal to it is F the net force by cos of beta and the N is N is equal to F cos beta let me check what is the N here uh, n is FCR okay we know from this FCR whatever calculator we put this in this here okay and the F into sine of beta right sine beta from this I will get the n that is a normal force exerted by the cylinder wall on the piston that is F sine beta upon cos beta that is tan beta you got this up till now no clear this is what the just we have learned in kind engineering mechanics okay now <coughs> see this is what all the analysis of the 
here one more thing i need to tell you why we are adding the piston weight suppose if there are see you can make the arrangement of the piston horizontally up uh, horizontally uh, vertically up or down also you can make it arrangement at a horizontal position horizontal position you, you can neglect this zero the mg weight of the piston <coughs> but in case of vertical if they have given you have to consider this right see when you have to take the plus <coughs> if your piston is going in upward direction right that that time you have to take this is plus and when you have to take minus if the piston is in uh, down uh, vertically downward below the crank vertical vertically below the crank that case you have to take plus sign okay guys i think how this is a the piston effort we have calculated from this that is piston effort is f gas minus f i minus f r plus minus m g these all four terms comes in picture right we have to uh, this uh, f i we have to make it minus neglect it also the f r we need to take consider if there is a friction force given and the weight and this is what the f from this what we are getting the piston effort right from the gas we are ultimately getting the piston effort now <coughs> how now we'll see once you done this now we'll see uh, connect how the connecting rod transmit the force right this is this is the force we just now we have seen from the a piston from the from the gas exerted force on the piston and piston exert force on the connecting rod and what the connecting rod will do that thing we will see now okay <clears throat> let me check what the time right now yeah it's almost 22 minutes okay we will continue we will take half an hour okay see the now you will see connecting rod connecting rod transmit transmit force force transmitted by connecting rod okay it will rather i will write force force transmitted transmitted by connecting rod okay see the connecting rod uh, this is what the connecting rod we are getting the force from the connecting rod right and here the crank is revolving at this place because of this force of connecting rod okay see along this line i will get one component and the 90 degree which is perpendicular to this see this is not 90 degree right the one component is here i'll resolve that component i'll resolve this cr this is what the force coming from cr right force coming from cr that is connecting rod i will resolve this into two component along this direction one and other is this direction this is 90 degree right and this is what the ft which is responsible for uh, turning moment of this crank and this is what the fn which is induce the radial thrust on the bearing right which is uh, which is not useful uh, for us right it is unuseful force that is fn but it will come because of this angle right now see the ft is equal to that is a tangential force this is what important we have to find because from it we will get the rotation of angular revolution of this crank ft is fcr okay and the one term fcr if this ft i will take in this direction then i will get see this is what uh, here you know the connecting rod is making an angle here it is beta right means this angle is also beta and this angle is 
these are on, on the same line this angle is theta and this is what the angle is theta right this is beta and this is theta right from what I will get uh, it is FCR into uh, wait 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 sorry sorry uh, let me correct this this is not theta this is 90 degree right let me see once again geometry right this is theta this is this is what 90 minus theta okay if it is 90 minus theta then this is beta plus theta this angle is beta plus theta beta plus theta is not only beta it is a beta plus theta right beta is only this much see the vertical line this is only the beta okay uh, from the see if this is theta then this is theta means it is a bit theta plus beta means sine theta plus beta okay the ft we are getting ft is a tangential force on the crank right this is what ft is a tangential tangential force on crank which is which is responsible for responsible for rotation or revolution revolution of crank okay now from this you if you further simplify this what you will get see the also the fn compound we can find out from the normal compound is that is fcr cos of uh, theta plus beta these are this is what the normal this means normal means in this direction okay and the ft is a tangential which is responsible for turning moment okay now uh, now we will go for then once you find out this ft then we will see the turning moment turning moment turning moment of crank right that is a t the t is equal to f r just now we have calculated f r into radius of the crank it's a f not a f r it is a f t f f t okay that put the uh, value of the f t over here f t is uh, f sin f sin theta plus beta right uh, divided by cos theta into r uh, yes ft ft is f sin let me check whether it is ft is correct or ft yes see ft is fcr okay you know fcr is fcr is equal to here here this fcr component fcr is equal to the force that is the force exerted by the piston divided by cos of beta right since from this here we have write, written directly this turning moment okay from this what we will get means here the turning moment t we are getting this tau is function of theta okay let me take this straight line else the presentation will not look good that's why I'm trying to make it as better as you like okay so I request you guys please hit the like button also share with your friends they will also get the benefits and subscribe my channel don't forget to subscribe okay see now the now we'll get the turning moment in terms of theta okay see if the turning moment from this we will make one big conclusion how the flywheel takes up head from this conclusion we will get here see if the turning moment is function of theta and function and theta is and theta is function of time 
right means therefore the turning moment turning tau is function of time also see if the turning moment is a function of tau from the newton's law you know what newton's law till newton's second law from newton's second law you know summation of moment that is the turning moment is equal to i into alpha this thing you know means the alpha is also function of alpha is function of time see if the alpha is function of the time from that we conclude that the jerk is let me write down it in a big the jerk is present in the system conclusion 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 let me conclude what we conclude conclusion yes yes i o n i think the spelling i wrote is conclusion yes yes i o n conclusion from this what we are meeting uh, the jerk is present in the system jerk is present in system as alpha is function of time so here the flywheel bonds okay the flywheel helps to reduce this okay here to reduce this jerk the here the function of the flywheel is to reduce the jerk okay it means it what the flywheel does it reduce the fluctuation in the speed right that's why the flywheel is used okay guys this is what all about uh, uh, the kinetic analysis of the single sided crank mechanism i think hope you guys understood this if you have any questions please ask and uh, don't forget to subscribe my channel okay guys Uh, in the tomorrow session what we will do on this what we have done the dynamic analysis we will see the problems on this in tomorrow session okay we will take some problems because see up till now we have the studied the derivation and theory part on this we have never take the di di problems similar way how we take the problems on the velocity and acceleration here we will take also for the single slider crank mechanism we will take the problems on this okay tomorrow's class tomorrow's session we'll take problems problems on dynamic analysis dynamic analysis of single slider crank mechanism okay we will see it in the tomorrow's class okay guys then thank you uh Thanks for watching please don't forget to like share and comment if you have any doubts or any question i need to ask then you put a comments and don't forget to subscribe my channel okay guys thank you bye